Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom Israel, Captain OC. Officer Nathai. Today we are going into the Babylonian captivity. Today's class is called Babylon Destroys Jerusalem. Alright, so last last time we went into the Assyrian captivity. Where we left? We left off with Tobit where? In Nineveh. Alright, in Nineveh. So we're gonna before we can jump into Babylon, we gotta figure out what happened to Assyria. But before we do that, we're gonna get the prophecy that Babylon was going to come and be a prominent player in the future. Give me Isaiah 39 and verse 1. We're going to read all the way down to 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 39, verse 1. Uh -huh. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and presents to Hezekiah, uh -huh. for he had heard that he had been sick. Right. When you read, Hezekiah prayed, and he had, what, 15 years granted to his mm -hmm. life? All right, yeah. read. And was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, mm -hmm. the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Read. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What saith these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Uh -huh. Then said he, what have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Uh -huh. Then said uh, Isaiah to Hezekiah, Read. Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house, all that is in thine house, read, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store uh -huh. unto this day, read, shall be carried to Babylon. Shall be what? Shall be carried to Babylon. Read. And nothing shall be left, said the Lord. Read. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, uh -huh. which thou, sh thou shalt beget, shall they take away. Uh -huh. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So because of Hezekiah showing the Lord's house and all his glory to the Babylonians, Isaiah was sent a message from the Most High God that we were going to be taken into Babylon. This is hundreds of years before it actually happened. All right? This is hundreds of years before it actually happened. So now let's get into it. Let's go to the book of Tobit, chapter 14, and verse 15. As we mentioned before, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Let's see what happened to Nineveh. The book of Tobit, chapter 14, verse 15. Uh-huh. But before he died, he heard of the destruction of Nineveh. He heard what? He heard of the destruction of Nineveh. He heard of the destruction of Nineveh. Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed Nineveh. Read in 6:12. Read which was taken by Nebuchadnezzar uh -huh. and Osiris. Read. And before his death, he rejoiced over Nineveh. So Tobit heard, he got to see that Nineveh was destroyed. That's like if you see Washington, D.C. destroyed. Right, You're like, right. man, the place of my captivity <laughs> finally got destroyed. So he got the glorious opportunity to see that. So what happened? So that was the first battle. That weakened Assyria as a nation. Right. And Babylon was on the rise. The end of Assyria happened in about 605 B.C. It was a battle at Carchemish. Let's read about that. Jeremiah chapter 46, and let's start at verse 1. 
Jeremiah 46, verse 1. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles. Read. Against Egypt. Against who? Against Egypt. Uh -huh. Against the army of Pharaoh Nico, uh -huh. king of Egypt. Read. Which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish. Where? In Carchemish. In Carchemish. Now, so what happened? Nineveh was destroyed. They moved their capital to Haran, which was right next to Carchemish. So Babylon came up and they fought the Assyrians in Carchemish. From that point on, Assyria was no longer a major player. Egypt was on their way to come help Assyria, but something happened. Now let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 35 and verse 20. So Nebuchadnezzar destroys um, the Assyrian troops at Carchemish, and that sets the tone for Babylon to be the ruling class. Read that. 2 Chronicles 35 verse 20. Uh -huh. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Nico, king of Egypt, uh -huh. came up to fight against Carchemish. You see that? Nico, Pharaoh Nico, was on his way to help the Assyrians against the Babylonians. But he got hindered before he could get there. Read. By Euphrates. Uh huh. And Josiah went out against and them. And what? And Josiah went out against so them. So on his way to Carchemish, Josiah, and it's being simple, he came out to fight against them and he was put to death. All right, so by the time they got there, the battle was already over, and Babylon was already established as being what? The next power, the next big figure on the face of the earth. But we're going to show you why was that. Go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 7. Understand, everybody that's a major player on the earth, the most high God controls them. Nobody becomes... Uh, the next world power, unless it's of the Lord. Right. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 7. Uh huh. Verse 6, verse 7. Yep. The lion is come up from his thicket. The lion is come up from his thicket. Read. And the destroyer of the Gentiles. And what? And the destroyer of the Gentiles Read. is on his way. Uh huh. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. Uh huh. And thy city shall be laid waste. Without an inhabitant. So who was this lion? Who was the destroyer of the Gentiles? This is not talking about Christ. This is Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 4. Why was he with the destroyer of the Gentiles? Like we just read. He came up against Assyria, defeated them. Came up against the Egyptians, defeated them. He, they were the first, well, the second major power on the earth. All right, read that. Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. Uh huh. The first was like a lion. The first was what? The first was like a lion. Daniel is seeing a vision. He says the first is like a lion. Who was the first in his major empires? Babylon. They were that golden head when you read uh, the dreams that he had. Read that. The first was like a lion uh -huh. and had eagle's wings. And had eagle's wings. Read. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, uh -huh. and it was lifted up from the earth. And made stand upon the feet as a man. Uh -huh. And a man's heart was given to and it. And a man's heart was given to it. So understand, Nebuchadnezzar was used by God. Right. All right, Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 6. The Most High God was using him for a certain purpose. We're going to read verse 6 and we're going to read verse 13. The book of Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. He do what? For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans were the wise men of Babylon. Read. That bitter and hasty nation, uh -huh. which shall march through the breadth of the land uh -huh. to possess the dwelling places that are not there. Why? Because they would come into Jerusalem. Remember, what was the prophecy that Isaiah gave unto Hezekiah hundreds of years before? He said, all your stuff is going to be taken where? Into Babylon. Right. So this is nothing new. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting? O Lord, my God, read, mine holy one, we shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. Thou hast what? Thou hast ordained them for judgment. You see that? Nebuchadnezzar didn't do nothing of his own. Sennacherib, Shalomaneser, none of these, Sargon, they didn't do anything of their own. The Most High God ordained them for judgment. Read. Right. And O mighty, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou hast established them for correction. So, we read last time, when we read about the Assyrian captivity, we knew that, uh, Assy I mean not Assyria, we knew that the northern kingdom of Ephraim was in the midst of sin. Right. They started from sin and ended in sin. So what was Judah doing that caused them to go into captivity? Let's get some of this in. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 17. The book of Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 17. Uh -huh. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah? Read. In the streets of Jerusalem? Uh -huh. The children gather wood. And the fathers kindle the fire. Uh -huh. And the women knead their dough, their dough, 
To make cakes to the queen of heaven. To do what? To make cakes to the queen of heaven. Uh huh. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. And to do what? And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. Uh huh. That they may provoke me to anger. So what are we seeing in the streets of Jerusalem? The same city that the Most High God sent angels to destroy. Right. We were baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven and making offerings to other gods. From there, go to Ezekiel chapter 22, and we're going to start at verse 8 and read all the way down to verse 12. So what was going on? We were in the midst of sin, Israel. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 8. Uh-huh. Thou hast despised mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. Read. Indeed, are men that that carry tales to shed blood. Uh huh. And indeed, they eat upon the mountains. They eat upon the mountains. What does that mean? There were sacrifices. Read to other gods. In the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. Lewdness, sexual acts. Read. Indeed, they have discovered their father's nakedness. They have what? They have discovered their father's they nakedness. They were sleeping with their their father's wife, their mother-in-law. Read. Indeed, have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. That was, they were sleeping hmm. with a woman that was on that menstrual period. Read. And one had committed abomination with his father's wife. With what? With his father's wife. With his father's wife. These are the things that we were doing. Sounds familiar to what's going on today. Read. And another had lutely defiled his daughter-in-law. Have what? Had plute. I'm sorry. And another had lutely defiled his daughter-in-law. Uh-huh. And another, indeed, had humbled his sister, his father's daughter. His own sister. Read. Indeed, have they taken gifts to shed blood? They what? Indeed, have they taken gifts to shed blood? Hitman, read. Thou hast taken usury. Usury. Tax collect. They they charging more. I right. gave you ten dollars. Now I want twenty dollars back. Scripture say don't do that. Read. Thou hast taken usury and increase, mm -hmm. and thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion. Extortion. Read. And has forgotten me, said the Lord God. You see that? We were in the midst of all those sins. Everything you can think of. It was going down where? Right there in Judah, in Jerusalem, amongst the southern kingdom. From there, go to um, Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 18. So we read about witchcraft, read about fornication, read about adultery, read about idolatry. What else were they doing? Ezekiel 13 and 18. Ezekiel 13 verse 18. Uh -huh. And say, thus said the Lord God, Woe to the woman that sow pillows to all, all armholes. That do what? That sow pillows to all armholes. That sow pillows to arm armholes. Read. And make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. So what is this going into? This is going into the sisters that were what? In the mix of witchcraft. Hmm. All right. You ever seen the pillows that the tarot readers and Miss Cleo and they put their on? That's what that's going into. And they have the veil on their head. They were going into the midst of witchcraft, and they were seeking our people away from the Lord, that God. Read. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, uh -huh. and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Right, because we understand that witchcraft does not work. Where, where was your tarot readers when, when, when Sennacherib came, hmm. when Shalom and Esther came, right. when uh, Nebuchadnezzar was about to come? They couldn't do anything. They couldn't save us. From there, go to Jeremiah chapter 27 and verse 5. So what happened? Did the Most High God just leave us out there to die? No, he gave us a warning as he always does. Hey, get your mind right. Something's going to happen if y'all don't change. Jeremiah 27, start at verse 5. Jeremiah 27, verse 5. Uh -huh. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm uh -huh. and have given it unto whom it seems you see that unto he me. give it unto who he wants read and now have i given all these lands into the hand of nebuchadnezzar uh -huh. the king of babylon read my servant my what my servant read and the beast of the field have i given him also to read. serve him and all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves so the Most High God sent the message to Jeremiah. Hey, listen. Tell the king of, of Israel that Nebuchadnezzar is going to be the guy, and you got to bow down, and you got to be a servant unto him right. until his time is done. Let's see that we listen to the Most High God. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, uh -huh. according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon. Read and serve him and his people and live serve him his people and live read why will you die uh-huh thou and thy people by the sword 
by the famine and by pestilence, as the Lord had spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. You see that? All we had to do was serve him and we would leave. Right. We should have got death. We right. just read about all the stuff we were doing. It should have been death. But let's see. He gave them the warning. Go down to um, 2 Kings 21 and verse 13. What was the prophecy that was the that's going to happen? What? Because he gave them the warning. He right. said, listen, by your neck. Read. 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 13. Uh -huh. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria. Uh -huh. He will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria. Read. And the plummet of the house of Ahab. Uh -huh. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish. He will what? And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish. The Most High had had enough with the sins that we were in. He said he's going to wipe Jerusalem as a dish. All right, from there, go to Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 10. So not only did he tell them what was going to happen, he told them who. He also told Israel how long you're going to be in captivity. Hmm. Read that. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. Uh -huh. For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years, that at what? That after 70 years uh -huh. be accomplished at Babylon. Read. I will visit you uh -huh. and perform my good good work toward you uh -huh. and causing you to return to this place. So he told you, listen, you're going to be in Babylon for 70 years, but when you're done, you're going to return. Read. Right. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, uh -huh. said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. What was the expected end? At 70 years, you go back into the land. Because right. Christianity loves to use this scripture. Hmm. I have thoughts of peace. They don't understand what they're talking about. This is in its context. It's talking about he's going to bring who? Israel back into the land after we serve uh, Babylon. Right. That's it. Right. Ain't got nothing to do with white man Jesus. <laughs> From there, jump to um, Ezekiel chapter 17 and verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 17 and verse 2. So he told us who was going to be the uh, who was going to be the ruling nation and what we had to do. Read that. Ezekiel 17 verse 2. Uh -huh. Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. Read. And say, thus said the Lord God, a great evil, a great eagle with great wings, long wing, full of feathers, which had diverse colors, came unto Lebanon uh -huh. and took the highest branch of the cedar. So it says a great eagle is come and took the highest branch. Who is the eagle? Go to Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 4. It says that an eagle was going to come and take the highest branch. Let's see who that eagle is first. Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 4. Uh -huh. The first was like a lion. Uh -huh. and Nebuchadnezzar. And had eagle's wings. And had what? And had eagle's wings. And had eagle's wings. Going into what? Babylon. The lion represented Nebuchadnezzar. And the eagle represented Babylon. Jump back to uh, Ezekiel. Read that again. Ezekiel 17, verse 3. Uh -huh. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. Read. And say, thus saith the Lord God, a great eagle with great wings, long wing, full of feathers, which have diverse colors, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. And took the highest branch of the cedar. What was that talking about? Mm. That's talking about uh, Nebuchadnezzar coming and taking who? Jehoiachin, all right? Go to 2 Kings chapter 24 and verse 10. He took the highest branch. It don't get no higher than the king. Right. He took the king out of his own land and placed him in Babylon. Read that. 2 Kings 24 and 10. 2 Kings chapter 24 verse 10. Uh -huh. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, uh -huh. and the city was sieged. Read. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, Read. and his servants did besiege it. Uh -huh. And Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin, the king of Judah uh -huh. went out to the king of Babylon. Read. He and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. He did what? And Jehoiachin. No, he took him. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. He took him where? He took him back to Babylon. That's how they took the highest branch of the cedar. All right. Jump back to uh, Ezekiel chapter 17 and read verse 4 and 5. So now what are we reading? We're reading how the prophecies are lining up, how these things were fulfilled. You can read about this. The Bible is a true book. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 4. Uh -huh. He cropped off the top of his young twigs mm -hmm. and carried it into a land of traffic. And carried it where? Into a land of traffic. Because Babylon, just like the daughter of Babylon, America, it was the, the um, trading capital of the world. Read. He set it in a city of merchants. Uh -huh. He took also of the seed of the land 
and planted it in a fruitful field. Uh -huh. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. So it says he took also the seed of the land. What is that going into? 2 Kings 24 and read verse 14. 2 Kings 24 and verse 14. Because what was the seed? You took the, the highest branch and mm -hmm. then you took the seed. The seed would be all those men that came underneath who? The king. Right. All right. Read that. All right. Second Kings chapter 24, verse 14. Uh -huh. And he carried away all Jerusalem Read. and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, uh -huh. even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and smiths. Uh -huh. None remained, save the poorest sort of the people. So this the was the second wave. They came three times into Jerusalem. This was the second wave. All right. This was the second wave. Go to Second Kings 24, read verse 1. Now we're going to get the first wave. 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 1. Uh -huh. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant uh -huh. three years. And Jehoiakim became his servant three years. What is that showing you? Now we became vassals to who? Babylon. Right. The same way Assyria, uh, we were vassals to Assyria under the northern kingdom. Read. Then he turned and rebelled against them. He did what? Then he turned and rebelled the against them. The written a fourth time, written before you learn. You would think, hey, man. Let me see. Last time they went against Assyria, they got taken into Assyria. Right, right. Now you, you got Babylon, and you're going to do the same exact thing. Right. From there, go to Daniel 1 and 1. We're going to show you. Who was a product of that first wave being taken out? Let's get the book of Daniel. We're going to read down to verse 3. Gotcha. Daniel chapter 1 through 3. The book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 1. Uh-huh. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. That's what we just read. He was the one who rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. Read. King of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem uh -huh. and besieged it. See, now it gives you the detail. It said, and besieged it. Read. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand uh -huh. with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar. You see that? With part of the vessels. So it was starting to fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah as well. Right. Read which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. Uh -huh. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Read. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel uh -huh. and of the king's seed and of the princes. Of the king's seed and princes. So Daniel was a high-ranking man. He wasn't your average day blow joke. Right. All right, from there, let's go back to Isaiah. We're going to read Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Because right there, just we just read that he took um, certain of the children of Israel, the king's seed and princes. Right. Let's get that prophecy again. Isaiah 3 and I verse 1. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh -huh. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, uh -huh. the mighty man and the man of war. The judge and the prophet, uh -huh. the prudent and the ancient, Read. the captain of fifty, and the honorable man, and the counselor, and the cunning artificer, and the eloquent orator. You see that? He show, Isaiah prophesied that all this was going to happen. Right. What did we do? We harden our necks as always. We do not listen to the prophets. And what happened? It came to pass. Just like always. Right. From there, go to um, Second King, I mean Ezekiel 17. Let's jump down to verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 17. In verse 12, uh -huh. say now to the rebellious house, know ye not what these things mean? Tell them, behold, the king of Babylon is come to Jerusalem Read. and hath taken the king thereof uh -huh. and the princes thereof Read. and led them with him to Babylon. So now he's explaining what, he's, what he just wrote in a parable. Read. And hath taken of the king's seed and made a covenant with him, uh -huh. and hath taken an oath of him. Uh -huh. He hath also taken the mighty of the land. So, he took the king's seed and he made a covenant with the next king. Who was the next king? Uh, Zedekiah, who was who was his first name was M Madaniah, uh, Matna, I forgot how you say it. But anyway, he made a covenant with him that what? He would agree to be a vassal unto Babylon. Right, right. Like we read in Jeremiah, I forgot what verse it was, it says just bow your neck in Jeremiah 27. Let's see, what did he do? Did he change it? Go to um, 2 Kings 24 and verse 17. 2 Kings 24, verse 17. 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 17. So Zedekiah was set up what? As a puppet king. He was set up on behalf of Babylon. Just do what I tell you. Right. Read. 2 Kings 17, uh, 24, verse 17. Uh -huh. And the king of Babylon made Madaniah 
his father's brother king you, in his stead. You see that? They set him up. He was set up by them. Read. And changed his name to Zedekiah. And did what? And changed his name to Zedekiah. So us losing our names is nothing new. This right. has been going on. Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. For though the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah until he had cast them out from his presence. Uh -huh. That Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. What did he do? Z Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Jeremiah 37 and 7. So Zedekiah was set up by Babylon, <laughs> and then he rebelled against Babylon. Understand, when we read Romans 13, and it says there's no authority but of God, that's nothing new. Right. Read that. Jeremiah 37 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah, that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Uh -huh. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which is come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. So what happened? When he when they knew uh um Egypt, I mean not Egypt, Babylon was coming up, never Nebuchadnezzar was coming, what did we do? We called to Egypt like we always do. But Jeremiah told him, Look, they are not going to show up. They're not going to come. And guess what? That happened. We were waiting on Egypt, and we got destroyed, waiting on another nation. They never made it. From there, go to 2 Kings 25 and verse 1. Let's get some of the things that happened during the siege. Because when you read about the Babylonian captivity, it's very, very important to understand the history and what happened during the siege of Jerusalem. Read that. 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, and the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his hosts, against Jerusalem, uh -huh. and pitched against it. And they built forts against it round about. Uh -huh. And the city was besieged unto it, unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. Read. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of and the land. And there was no bread for the people in the land. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 10. What does this mean? Why is this important? Uh, some other people that don't believe the Bible, they try to point out that in the Bible we ate our own children. Hmm. As that is a, like we did that willingly. Right, right, no. Right. You got to understand the history and the context of what happened. The land was sieged and there was no land. This was a curse from God. Right. Read that. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 10. Uh -huh. The hands of the pitiful woman have sodden their own children. Have what? Have sodden their own children. What does sodden mean? To boil. Read. They were their meat and the destruction of the daughter of my people. You see that? We were in such uh, bad times that we had to eat our own children. Right. Why? Because we were in the midst of idolatry, because we were worshiping other gods, because we were uh, baking cakes to the queen of heaven. That's why. That's not what the Lord wanted to do, but he had to do it. Right. He had to do it. From there, go to 2 Kings 25 and verse 6. We almost done, Israel. I'm sorry. Babylon is a very, very major picture, and we, we leaving a lot out. We're going to have to hit it with the next section. But I pray that y'all understand the importance of this. Read that. 2 Kings chapter 25 and verse 6. Uh -huh. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon to Reblah. And they gave judgment upon him. Read. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. They what? And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. Uh -huh. And put out the eyes of Zedekiah. So they killed his sons and plucked his eyes out. They wanted the last thing for Zedekiah to remember was his sons being killed. Read. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, uh -huh. and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, Read. and bound him with fetters of brass, uh -huh. and carried him to Babylon. They put iron on him and carried him to Babylon. Right. Hmm, sounds familiar. Read. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuch Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, uh -huh. a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. Read. And he burnt the house of the Lord. And what? And he burnt the house of the Lord. The temple was destroyed. They put it on fire and blazed it. Read. And he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house uh -huh. and all the house of, is of Jerusalem and every great man's house burnt he with fire. Read. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard Break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Read. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carry away. Read. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen uh -huh. and the pillars of brass 
that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases and the brazen seed that was in the house of the Lord, uh -huh. did the Chaldees break in pieces and carried the brass of them to Babylon. They carried it all out to Babylon. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the spoons and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered took they away. Uh -huh. And the fire pans and the bowls and such things as were of gold and gold and of silver and silver the captain of the guard took away. Now you might say, why the hell they take spoons <laughs> and forks and brass and fire pans? Right. Because remember the prophecy. Hezekiah was showboating and showing them all this stuff. And he said, what? Everything that you showed them is going to be taken into Babylon. Right. Don't play with the most high God. From there, jump down to Jeremiah 24. And we're going to start at verse 1. The book of Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 1. Uh -huh. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. Uh -huh. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So he, he put two baskets in front of them. Read. Verse 2. One basket had very good figs, uh -huh. even like the figs that are first ripe. Read. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. So there were two type of people that were taken into Babylon. And he's comparing them to figs. Read. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, mm -hmm. that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, uh -huh. like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah. So, what is this showing you? Hmm. The Most High God don't deal with us as a one person. He right. deals with us right. as a nation. There were good people that were taken into captivity, just like there were evil people. Right. Because when the whole nation is on one accord, that's when we'll be delivered. But as long as we're in sin, he's not going to deliver us. Read that. Keep reading. I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of uh -huh. Judah, read. whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For what? For their good. So they were taken into captivity for their good. When well, you read about uh -huh. Daniel, Daniel became what? The third in charge. Right. Read. Right. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, mm -hmm. and I will bring them again to this land. Uh -huh. And I will build them and not pull them down. Read. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. Right. That was that was that prophecy came to pass and during the Persian Mede captivity. Read. Verse 7. And I will give them in heart to know me. Uh-huh. That I am the Lord. And they shall be my people. Read. And I will be their God. Read. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Uh-huh. As and as the evil figs which cannot be eaten, uh -huh. they are so evil. Surely thus saith the Lord. So will I give Zedekiah the king of Judah and his princes and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And I will deliver them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. For what? For their hurt. Uh -huh. To be a reproach and a proverb, uh -huh. a taunt and a curse uh -huh. in all places whither I shall drive them. Read. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that I give unto them and to their fathers. You see that? There were two type of ways we were going to go into captivity. Some of them is for their good, and other, it was because of the wickedness that we, they were in. That was the, the Israelites that we read about burning incense to other gods. Right. The older ones got their head chopped off and shot in the back of the head. Hmm. That's why this stuff happened, because they're in the midst of sin. Right. Jeremiah 15, 11, last scripture, Jeremiah. showing you how the Most High feels about this whole thing. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. Uh -huh. The Lord said... Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. Read. Verily I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well Read. in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. So understand, as long as we kept the Most High God first, no matter where we were carried away, he was going to be on our side. Right. Now, on the next, next in Persian Mede, I'll go into how Babylon fall and how the Persian Medes came to reign. That we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, 
Europe, I'm Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.